The 2013 Vuelta a España was one of the closest and most exciting Grand Tours in years. Here are GCN's top 10 riders. Number 10. Adam Hansen of Lotto Belisol. He may not be everyone's pick, but GCN followed Adam Hansen throughout the Vuelta for our Rider Diaries series. He made the break on stages 17 and 18 on the way to completing his impressive third Grand Tour of the year and seventh Grand Tour in a row, and for that reason, he makes our top 10. Number 9. Kenny Ellison of F de G. Kenny Elisond is a young French rider who came to the Vuelta and made a name for himself. Elisond was brought as a domestique for Thibaut Pinot, but after he made the break on stage 20 to the Anglerou, he attacked on the second to last climb with the much more experienced Paolo Tirolongo of Team Astana and held on ahead of a surging Chris Horner to take the biggest victory of his career to date. Number 8. Joachim Rodriguez Katusha. Rodriguez took a victory on stage 19 to the Alto Naranco, attacking the group of favourites with one kilometre to go to take the stage win to go with teammate Danny Moreno's two earlier victories. Up to the second last day, he looked like he could be in with an outside shot at the overall victory, but was dropped by Chris Horner, Vincenzo Nibali and Alejandro Valverde and finished off the overall podium at a Grand Tour for the first time since 2011. Number 7. Alejandro Valverde, Movistar. Valverde left the Vuelta without a stage win, but was always up there and always competitive. He took the green points jersey and third overall, leaving Joachim Rodriguez behind on the Angliru to strengthen his hold on his third place ahead of the final day. Will Valverde ever win another Grand Tour after his victory at the 2009 Vuelta? Comment and let us know. Number six, Michael Matthews of Orica Green Edge. Of the four bunch sprints at this year's Vuelta, Matthews won two, including the final stage in Madrid, delivering on the promise that he has shown throughout his young career. With the support of the Orica lead-out train, we look forward to seeing what Matthews can do at other Grand Tours. Number five, Nicholas Roach, Team Saxo Tinkov. Fifth place overall and fifth in our top 10. After riding for Alberto Contador at the Tour de France, people wondered if Nicholas Roach had settled into a super domestique role for the Grand Tours. He proved any doubters wrong with his win on stage two on the way to fifth place overall, his first Grand Tour stage win and best ever overall finish in the Grand Tour. Number four, Danny Moreno of Team Katusha. Danny Moreno is Joaquim Rodriguez's super domestique and may well be one of the best domestiques in cycling. He took two stage wins, held the leader's jersey and finished 10th overall, en route to sacrificing any overall chance he may have had to help Perito take fourth place overall. Number three, Warren Barguil of Argos Shimano. Warren Barguil went into the Vuelta as a relative unknown and came out of it a double Grand Tour stage winner. After recovering from a heavy crash early in the race, he attacked the break in the final kilometre of stage 13 to take his first win and backed that up just three days later, edging out Rigoberto Urán. Barguil must be marked as one to watch for the future. Number two, Vincenzo Nibali of Astana. At the Vuelta, Nibali was going for his second Grand Tour win of the year. He always looked to be a little off his Giro form, but that didn't stop him battling for the win. Going into the final stage, Horner looked to have Nibali under control, but Nibali's attacks on the Angleru looked to put Horner in serious trouble at some points, and the battle between the two made this one of the most exciting Grand Tour finishes in years. Number one, Chris Horner, Radio Shack Leopard. By winning the Vuelta at 41, Horner became the oldest Grand Tour winner ever and the oldest Grand Tour stage winner. Never a favourite going into the race, Horner proved to be the strongest rider in the field whenever the road went uphill, taking two stage wins and dropping Vincenzo Nibali on several occasions in the brutal final week to recover his losses from the stage 11 time trial. Horner battled Nibali all the way up the Angliru and dropped him in the final kilometres of the climb to solidify his lead before a victory lap on the final flat day in Madrid. Who would be in your top 10 riders of the Vuelta? Have we got it right? Let us know in the comments section below. Pushing all of the wind, but that's not completely true because after you've done your turn and you lose a bit of speed and go back down the line, you then got to increase that speed again in order to get back onto the